Hi again, it's Chrissy here for part two of reintegration with children. So I mentioned in the previous portion of this video that I was a former public school teacher. Um, one of the things that can be really useful for children, and I remind service members of this when I teach reintegration briefs, is one of the ways that we can begin the process of bonding with our child is just being present in what they're doing. And I don't mean present, by sitting on the floor and doing what it is that we need to do, because we all have things that we have to do, right? We need to catch up, we need to feel like we decompress. One of the things I really, um, one of the beefs I have about smartphones right now is productivity and um, leisurely activities or decompression activities all look the same to a child. So for example, if my parent, whenever I was a child, went and got out an address book and got an envelope and started writing a letter, that signaled to me that they were writing a letter. And that could be for any reason. It could be that they were talking to a relative that lived far away or that they were writing a birthday invitation, but that signaled to me writing a letter. Whereas if I was to write and send out a birthday invite, it looks like this. And being on social media also looks like this. And texting a meme to my friends also looks like this. So being present will take a period of time for you to actually um, have eye contact with your child and be in the same space as them. So if you need to set a timer, maybe um, put your phone on do not disturb for a period of time, that is really important for a child to feel like they really have your undivided attention. So when you're trying to reintegrate with your child, um, it's sometimes service members will jump the gun. So think about this because you as family members will be the conduit. You're going to be the person that helps bond that relationship. So consider when your service member wants to reintegrate with your child, remind them that your child really likes maybe dinosaurs at the moment. So Evan, our child loves dinosaurs. So I got some new dinosaurs and we can play dinosaurs with Evan. Or maybe I have an older child who's become really um, interested in hockey or another sport or um, has gotten a, an interest in some kind of um, reading. Um, so you can read a book together or something like that. And by the way, older children can also have book clubs. So even if you have a teenage child, consider reading a book that they're really interested in. And that's another way you can bond. So for example, start with an activity that they like. So I might not actually care about dinosaurs or really like it, but my child likes it. So I'm gonna show interest in what they are interested in. So get down on the floor with them at eye level. If they're really interested in the, um, in the Lord of the Rings books, get a Lord of the Ring book and get cracking on that. Get it in an audiobook form if you're not good at reading, okay? Now, sit down, play with them, get interested in what they're doing. And after a period of time, you can also get your child interested in an activity you might like. Um, maybe playing basketball or um, going to a sporting event or fishing or um, hiking or whatever it is. So think about incremental steps to getting that child to enjoying an activity together because a lot of service members, again, when I go out and teach these briefs, they'll express to me, um, I don't know if my child's gonna enjoy being around me. Will my child even remember me at this point? Um, you, back home, as the person that's trying to bond the child with the service member, talk about the service member regularly. Show videos, show pictures. Talk about what the service member likes doing. Let them know that the service member is proud of the child um, during their absence. Um, encourage, encourage, encourage that relationship, okay? Another good thing about these little tool toys and tools for you as a caregiver back at home. Children do not normally like interaction where adults come and sit down and say, hey, let's talk talk about deployment. Let's talk about homecoming. Children will usually feel more comfortable expressing feeling when they're enjoying some kind of active play. So maybe a dinosaur is for a child. You have another child who likes Frozen or something for 
get down, play the game that they want to play. And during that interaction, they might say something like, like my child actually said to me once, but is the ship that you or dad going on, is that ship at war? These are heavy questions, but that was something that was weighing really heavily on my child's heart. And I needed, I was glad that I had an opportunity to express that with him, but it came not during one of the times where I was like, hey, let's talk about deployment, okay? Never really, sometimes it'll work that way, but usually not. So consider those interactive play times as a good time for your child to bring out some, some questions that they might have. And if they resist it, that's okay. Keep playing with Frozen guys and they might come out later. Or if you have an older child, it should just be when you're taking your daily walk or playing basketball or playing a game of cards, all right? So again, your child's perception of deployment and reintegration is their reality, okay? As crazy as it might seem, they will pick up little pieces of what's going on around the world and, and around their environment, and that will become what they see. Children are actually experiencing the pandemic very differently than adults, all right? Some of them are just bothered and annoyed and not particularly scared. Some of them are incredibly afraid of a virus because it has been portrayed as being very deadly um, and invisible and something that harms people. So find out what your child's view of homecoming and deployment will look like. And then think about ways that you can help them work through the process of um, of changing their perception and their reality. So letting them also know that there are children like them. Hopefully they have friends who are experiencing the same deployment or have recently gone through a deployment. And these are people they can reach out to as well. Also, I would like to say some fantastic external resources. Focus, families overcoming under stress. Resiliency training for kids. They take um, children ages two and up or three and up, sorry, they have to be three. Um, but they'll take children in a family setting and they'll give them some resiliency tools to talk about ways that they can reintegrate with deployment um, and homecoming, all right? So common concerns, child's concerns will be a little different than the deployed, parent, uh, deployed parents. Um, Children will be very concerned about physical appearance of their parent. Um, I also let service members know that after coming home from, from a deployment, I'm talking about mostly sailors, um, you will be drinking water that is ship water, you will be eating ship food, you will look different and you will smell different to them. Okay, so just be prepared for that. <laughs> Um, and that can, your child can have a different reaction because they might remember you a different way. Um, they will also be scared um, if that child has been in danger. Be prepared for those questions and be prepared with an, a statement that you're comfortable with, um, what you wanna disclose to the child. Um, and consider that we want them to be, um, we wanna make sure that they're involved and that they can ask those questions. Um, but no one wants to scare their child. So um, consider the question, the way you want to answer that question when your child brings it up. Um, is my parent angry? Mm, that's sad too. So parents, uh, I always remind my children and I've, I reminded my students when I was a teacher, um, adults are not perfect. Adults make mistakes. Adults have emotions like kids do. And sometimes they can get very angry or very sad or um, be lonely and that's normal. And we want to make sure that we express those feelings to our children as well um, as caregivers and then encourage the service member to express that as well. Um, does my parent love me? Oh, so hopefully we've been sending regular communication. Uh, the service member has regularly been sending communication, but encourage that in your child. Um, and will my parent ever leave, leave again? That is a reality for most uh, sailors and service members that deployment will happen again at some point. And we wanna provide them with an honest answer, but not one that will make them worry um, during the reintegration process. So yes, at some point, it's the same thing with kids when they experience a PCS. Yes, we will move again at some point, but not for a while or not, not until 
two Christmases from now or um, maybe next summer, but we don't know yet. But as soon as we do, I promise we will talk about it. So consider um, what that child's perception will be. Um, the deployed parent, and I have had uh, service members express this to me, they worry that their child will not recognize them. They worry about the reaction that they're gonna get when they first see their child. Service members will fantasize about this for months. Um, and we wanna be very realistic with what a child's reaction will be after seeing someone who has been gone for a period of time. Um, how will I parent again? This is also a concern. Fleet and Family does have parenting courses if that is something that you uh, feel like you need more information and education on. We teach um, an effective parenting course. Um, I really like the curriculum. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's very um, applicable. So reach out to us if, if you have additional concerns about that and we'll see what we can do to help you out in that process. Um, has my absence hurt my child? Yes, that is something else. And the answer is, I don't really know. Each child experiences deployment differently. Um, so some children, maybe yes, maybe some, some child only temporarily. Um, with some other children, they, they're like, well, no, nope, that's just the way it is. I'm a military kid. I know military kids. This is my life. Um, how do I make up for lost time and will we get along? Again, small incremental steps to get to that goal are really important. Listening, asking a lot of open-ended questions, and trying to be as present as possible for that service member. So you as a caregiver back at home, try and facilitate that. And I'll have some more tips in the next section of this brief. See ya.